The UK recently blocked the sale of Korean-made FA-50 light fighters to Argentina. According to KAI, the manufacturer, they were unable to follow up on Argentine interest in purchasing the jets because six of the major components in the FA-50 are built in Britain, which has an arms embargo against Argentina. So, a little history. Several hundred miles off the coast of Argentina lies the Falkland Islands. Owned by Britain, this is contested by Argentina, which states that the Falklands, which they call La Isla Malvinas, belongs to them. Needless to say, this dispute reached a head in 1982 when Argentina invaded the islands and, after a brief war lasting several months, were defeated. Please note, I am not going to cover the full background of this dispute here. There are other videos out there that do, and I have no doubt there will be plenty of people in the comments offering their opinions. However, if you do want to know more about the secret mission by Argentine Special Forces to attack Royal Navy warships in Gibraltar Harbour, I've made a video on that, which I'll link to at the end and in the description. Anyway, after the conflict, the UK placed an arms embargo on Argentina, and almost 40 years later, that is still in place. The Argentine military has suffered badly as a result, especially the Air Force, the FAA. At its peak during the Falklands War, the FAA operated a fairly large combat fleet, the core of which was made up of 17 Dazzle Mirage III fighters, 30 Israeli Dagger fighter bombers, which were an unlicensed Israeli copy of the Mirage V, and around 50 A4 Skyhawk attack jets. The FAA lost around a third of this fleet fighting the British, and although there were transfers of aircraft after the war from friendly countries to make up some of the losses, the FAA was in a much weakened state. As a result, attempts have been ongoing since the 80s to modernise the Argentine Air Force. Unfortunately for Argentina, the country has had an extremely tough time financially, with the economy largely being in the doldrums. There have also been a number of high-profile corruption and drug trafficking scandals involving the FAA leadership, which further interfered with updating the Air Force. Initially, attempts were made to acquire surplus F-16As from the United States, but these failed for economic reasons and UK pressure. Instead, the United States sold Argentina 36 A4AR Fighting Hawks, a refurbished and, up and upgraded version of the A4 Skyhawk. These were a welcome addition and allowed the replacement of the older model A4s that had suffered heavily during the war, but they were always just a stopgap. The FAA still had to replace their Mirage types in the fighter role, and here they have been consistently blocked by the British. A deal to purchase Mirage F1s from Spain was stopped in 2014 after pressure from the UK. This was followed the next year by an approach to the Israelis for Kafirs, an aircraft that has been heavily marketed to countries just like Argentina. However, the costs and, once again, political pressure stopped the sale. The Argentines then briefly looked at the Swedish Gripen, which has been adopted by the neighbouring Brazilian Air Force. But the Gripen uses a large number of British-built components, letting the UK veto the sale. This led to some more interesting proposals. The Russians stepped in and offered to lease 12 Su-24 strike aircraft to the FAA. But these aircraft were nothing like the sort of aircraft the FAA requires for its air defence, and the offer was basically the political equivalent of the Russians' ship posting. China also made overtures, offering both their JF-17 or their Chengdu J-10 fighters. But the FAA is not interested particularly, as their entire infrastructure is geared around Western aircraft, plus a purchase of the Chinese aircraft could well annoy the Americans. Something not really worthwhile just to pick up a dozen or so fighters. So while other air forces in South America have modernised and are now flying capable aircraft types, the FAA has withered away. The ancient Mirage variants have all now gone to the scrapyards, and all that remains in service are a handful of, fight of the fighting hawks, reportedly just able to fly and unlikely capable of combat. And this is where the FA-50 came in. In 2019, the Argentines approached the Koreans about purchasing some of these aircraft. Derived from a lightweight supersonic trainer, the FA-50 is a fairly capable little multi-role aircraft that is economical to operate and much cheaper than mainstream fighter aircraft. On paper, ideal for an Air Force looking to rebuild some capability after decades of neglect. But then the Brits blocked it. 
As already stated, the use of British components allows them to veto sales of FA-50s. So why did they do it? After all, a few light fighters aren't likely to vex the Royal Air Force contingent stationed on the Falklands, which flies the much more capable Typhoon. In fact, the reason for the British intransigence after almost 40 years can be seen in a tweet put out by the Argentine Defence Minister after being told that KAI couldn't sell them FA-50s. At the end of the tweet, he included the hashtag Malvinas Argentinas. The Falklands are Argentine. So perhaps the Brits have a point after all. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you are interested in random military history and current conflicts, have a look through my video list. You may well find something else that is worth a watch as well. Uh, also check out the links in the description for some other sites and links. Have a good one and hopefully I'll see you again.